What if you could access your digital media from anywhere in your home and display it on a 150 inch projection screen like this, on a TV, or even from your mobile device? In this video, I'm gonna be setting up my very first NAS. Now, I've been wanting to do this for about a year now, but honestly, I've been kind of intimidated because I don't understand all the intricacies of what a NAS entails. But Ugreen has made it really simple from what I can see online. And so when they reached out to me recently, they said, hey Michael, we've got some new products coming out. We've got a two bay NAS, a four bay NAS, a six bay, as well as an eight bay. We'd love to send you one of our four bays with some hard drives. Would you be interested? And I said, absolutely. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at the hardware. We're gonna get this set up, get it on my computer, get it on my network. We're gonna do some tests and let's just see what a NAS is all about. Now, because this video is sponsored by Ugreen, this will not be a review because I don't do paid reviews but I thought it'd be really cool to take you through my journey as a first time NAS user and just kind of see what does that process look like so that if you're considering a NAS, maybe you won't be as intimidated as I was. Now this is a Kickstarter project, so you can save up to 35% by backing the project. If you're interested, I'll have links to it down in the description below. Now, if you're watching this video, you're probably familiar with what a NAS is, but if not, it's simply a network attached storage. So basically we're gonna take these four hard drives, we're going to install it into this NAS unit, and this NAS plus the software will see this as one big hard drive, and it'll provide some redundancy so that if a hard drive fails, we don't lose data. And I'll explain that more in detail as we get further along the video when we start setting up a RAID configuration. So here we have the Ugreen NAS Sync DXP4800 Plus network attached storage. We also have four Seagate 10 terabyte Iron Wolf Pro hard drives. All right, let's go ahead and take a look inside the box. Got some nice thick padding here. We've got the DXP4800 Plus four bay NAS drive, and we've got our box of accessories. All right, let's go ahead and take out the NAS. So here you can see we've got an aluminum alloy chassis. Dude, that looks nice on the front. Super clean, I like that. Inside the accessories box, we've got manual and warranty card, DC power supply right here three-prong IEC power cable. We have two Cat7 cables. They even included a little screwdriver, bunch of screws. Got what looks like to be some thermal tape for the NVMe drives, because we've got two extra bays in here that you can install some M.2 drives. Lay that off to the side. And we've got two little keys that will allow us to lock each one of these bays, and we'll look at that in a little bit. All right, so looking at the chassis, this thing is really nice. So we've got this aluminum alloy, uh, frame here, Ugreen logo. The front, we've got the bays numbered one, two, three, and four. To open them, we can just push that. We'll check out these caddies and install the hard drives here just in a second. So we can lock it right here. Power, our indicators here, SD card, USB-C, as well as USB 3.2. On the back, we have a magnetic filter that we can easily remove and clean. And here we have a large cooling fan. Down at the bottom, we have an HDMI port, a USB 3.2 port, two USB 2.0s, two LAN connections, one being a 2.5 gigabit and a 10 gigabit port. Now that's something you don't find on very many NAS systems, especially at this price point. And over to the right, we have a reset button and our DC power. Now on the bottom, we have this bay door. And again, they included little screwdriver and if we lift that up you can see we've got our RAM right here and then we've got two slots for our NVMe. Now the 4800 does come with 8 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM which is really significant but it's also expandable up to 64 gigabytes of RAM and then we also have two slots down here for your M.2 NVMe drives and so these are solid state so if you want to add more storage, or if you want to use those as cache, you can do so. All right, now it's time to install our hard drive. So we're just going to push this button here, slide this little tray out. Right on the bottom, we've got this little clip. We just push down and that opens that up. And then we can take our Seagate hard drive. These are 10 terabyte. 
and we just slide them in there and lock it down. Now check that out. That makes it really nice so we don't have to have any tools. And then we just take that, slide that all the way to the back and lock it down. So we'll do that with each one of these real quick. Okay, so I really don't think that could have gotten any easier. And then if you want to lock it down, if you're worried about people accidentally bumping that, then you can just turn that to the left and we can lock all four of them, especially like if you've got little kids, that way you don't have to worry about those being ejected. Now a NAS like this can be utilized in a lot of different ways. What I'll be doing here in this video is fixing this. As you can see here, we've got several hard drives on my editing workstation. So all of my videos, all of the 4K footage, all from 2018 when I started my YouTube channel, rest on various hard drives. And over the years, I've had to continually add more space, both internal as well as external. And you can see here, two of these drives are almost completely full. And this F drive right here is my main drive that I edit off of. And so ideally we're going to take a lot of these resources here, move this over to one massive storage area. It's gonna help me with organization. Right now, if I need to go find, say a project that I did three or four years ago, I have to think through, okay, is it on this drive? Is it on that drive? Let me swing over here. Which one, you know, where are those files located? And so having a NAS is gonna help me streamline that and have everything all in one location. All right, so I have the NAS set up on the top of my desk. I've got power running down as well as an ethernet cable. So let me just kind of share with you what I'm working with. So down here, I've got my custom computer. Remember I told you about the three hard drives? So we got three hard drives here. I've got another hard drive here. These are all external. And then inside the computer, I've got three hard drives down there as well. So a total of seven hard drives. Over here, we're gonna be connecting to a UPS battery backup. That way we always have power going to the unit. We don't wanna lose any data if it's in the middle of transferring something. Right back here, I have a D-Link. This is a network switch. And so right here, we've got two 2.5 gigahertz connections. The rest of these are one gigabit. And so what I've done is we've got one going up to the NAS and then the other one going down to my computer so that we've got a 2.5 gigahertz connection between my computer and the NAS up here. So now that it's plugged in, let's turn it on. And after a few minutes, even the land light on the front changed to white. Now that we have the NAS turned on, we're gonna open up a browser and we're gonna type in find.ugnas.com and we'll hit enter. So what this is gonna do is search for the NAS and here you can see it found the DXP4800+. Plus. We're gonna go ahead and connect to it And we're gonna give this device a name. And so I'm gonna call this all caps YouthMan NAS. And then we're gonna create a username and password. So I'm gonna do YouthMan. And we'll create a password and click next. On this step, we can register and bind the Ugreen account, but I'm gonna skip this and we'll come back to this probably at a later time. Next, we're gonna select how we want to receive updates. You can choose to just receive the important ones, update all of them, or have it notify you when the updates are available. Now, since this is the first install, I'm actually gonna check the second option, just update all of the options, and then we're gonna check the I agree and click start. And so now we're connected to the NAS. I'm gonna go ahead and click I understand. Now, I'm not gonna walk through all of these, but I do wanna show you a few things. So if we click on control panel and go down to system update. So here you can see we've got some updates in progress, so we'll let that finish. So now that the updates have been installed, we're gonna go ahead and restart the unit. So now what we need to do is set up the drives and tell the NAS how we want those drives configured. So we're gonna come over here to Storage Manager. We're gonna go ahead and click Start. So the first thing we need to do is select the RAID type. Now, I'm gonna let you do some research on your own on what type of RAID setup you're going to choose. I'm going to choose RAID 5. So with RAID 5, we have four 
10 terabyte hard drives, so a total of 40 terabytes. By choosing RAID 5, we're going to lose one of those drives storage capability. So we'll go from 40 terabytes down to 30 terabytes of usable storage. But by doing that, we now have one drive that can fail and we won't lose any data. We just swap in a new drive and it will rebuild that data. Now we could choose a RAID 6. If I did that, I would lose half of my storage. Two of those drives would be uh, have the ability to fail and we not lose any data, but I would go from 40 terabytes down to only 20 terabytes of usable storage and I really need the storage, so we're going to select RAID 5. We'll go ahead and click this drop down arrow and we're going to select each one of those drives. Now we could run a hard drive test, but that's going to take a really long time especially it's saying here three to five days. So for the sake of this video, I'm gonna choose no, but I'd probably recommend if you're setting this up for your own personal, go ahead and run those tests and just let it run for a few days. We'll go ahead and click next step. So on this screen, we're gonna leave everything by default. It's going to set the max allocated capability for those drives. And then here we can choose what type of file system and we're gonna leave it at the recommended and click next step. So this is just confirming what we're going to be setting up. We're gonna have 27.2 terabytes of usable storage out of the 40 in a RAID 5 configuration. And we'll click next step. Now, this screen basically says, look, if you've got stuff on those drives, now these are brand new drives, so they're empty. We don't have to worry about it. But if you're using like some old drives that you had lying around, just make sure you've already backed up that data because this next step is going to wipe those all clean. And so these are fresh, uh, brand new out of the box drives. So we're gonna delete all data. It's gonna make us input our password just to make sure that you know what you're doing and we're gonna confirm. So this is gonna take a little while and so let this go ahead and set up and we'll come back once it's finished. Now that our drives are formatted, we're gonna go ahead and close this and we're gonna head over here to the control panel. From here, we're gonna go into file services and we're going to enable SMB service and we're gonna click apply. And we'll close this window. So these are going to be the main apps that you're going to be using most of the time, but we can also click on App Center and see all of the various apps that Ugreen offers at the moment. Now more than likely over time, we'll see more apps introduced into this platform. Now if you're gonna use this as a Plex server for your movie collection, you're going to set up a Docker or a container, but I'm not gonna go into that in this video. So I'm gonna install a couple things. I'm gonna install the photos. We're gonna install the security manager. And I'm gonna install the sync and backup. So we do need to install this install version manager. So we'll go ahead and click confirm first. Now, because this is my first NAS, there's a lot I have to learn, but there are a few things that we can go into. We can go under this, uh, click on control panel, come under hardware and power. And then if we go down to hardware and power, you can see you can set your fan settings. So if you want it to be quiet, like in my room, I may want to change that to quiet if I feel that it's too loud. Or if you're doing a lot of heavy lifting, you can set it to full speed or just leave it as default and it's going to adjust the fan speed uh, according to the temperature within the system. So for now, I'm gonna leave it under default. You can also adjust the LED indicator brightness right here. So now let's go ahead and test the transfer speed from my PC to the NAS. So I'm gonna go into File Manager. We're just gonna create a shared folder right here. Click on the little plus and go to New Shared Folder. And for now, we're just gonna call this Test. Click OK. And we're gonna give this read write access. Click OK. All right, so now if we close that, and I'm gonna close this browser window, and we're gonna come into our network, click on Youthman, and now we can see that test folder. So over on the right is my local hard drive. You can see this is from my F drive right here. This is a file, this is a review that I just recently published on my YouTube channel. It's right at about 10 gigabytes, so I thought that would be a good file size to work with. And so what we're gonna do, I'm gonna start a timer as soon as I drag and drop this from my local hard drive to the NAS, and let's just see how long that takes. So here we go. 
we'll start the timer. We'll just go ahead and click show more. And so you can see this 10 gigabyte file is going to take roughly about one minute. And that file is completed in 54 seconds. Now I know a lot of my audience likes to back up their movie collection, their 4Ks, their Blu-rays onto a hard drive, or maybe you're wanting to create something like a Plex server. So I want to do one final test on a larger file. So over on the right, we've got Batman vs Superman. This is a 76.7 gigabyte file, and we're going to transfer that over to the NAS here on the left. So I'm just going to drag and drop it. We'll start the timer and let's see how long it takes. Now, as you can see, this shows it's going to take about 10 minutes to transfer a 74 gigabyte file. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward it and I'll show you the final time once it completes. All right, so here we are at 99% and we're at 9 minutes and 31 seconds. So we'll stop there, went a little bit over. So 9 minutes, 31 seconds to transfer a 76.7 gigabyte file from the hard drive to the NAS. Now, if we go back into the file browser, we can see we've got our shared folder right here, the test. And once we go into that, we've got our two files that we've transferred, the full movie here. And then this is the clip from the other day. This was a review that I did. And if I double click it, you can see they have their own built-in media player um, that will play those files. Of course, you can hook this up to an external, maybe a TV with the HDMI port and be able to watch movies straight from the NAS. So there are some AI features built into the software. I'm gonna take you into just my file browser. If I come down to Youthman NAS, you'll see there's this personal folder. Remember earlier we created this test folder, but there's a personal folder. If I try to go into that, we're gonna get an, a, a message that's saying we don't have permission. So I'm gonna show you how to get access to that. We're gonna come over here to the control panel, come over here to user management, double click on my username, and we're gonna scroll down and enable this personal folder, and we're gonna click save. So now we have access to that folder, so we can come in here and go into this folder, and you'll see there is a default folder called Photos. So we're gonna go over here to the App Center, and we're gonna pull up and open up the Photos app. And as you can see, we don't have any photos in that uh, photo folder. So we're going to add some. So I'm going to click add photo. These are on my other hard drive. So we'll just grab these. I just copied a, a few from my family photos. And so that's going to upload it into this section. And then we're going to have some AI stuff happen. So this is showing I had those in there earlier. So it's still seeing that. So I'm going to tell it to go ahead and override those. So we're copying those files into that folder. And then we're gonna see some other things here. So it's separated them by date. Then I can also click on albums. And so it takes a little bit of time for it to begin to generate some of this metadata from these uh, photos and the AI features. So I'm not sure that this is an amazing tool, but I'll show you in just a second. So while this is generating, it's gonna take a little bit. Um, I noticed that last time I did this. So I'm gonna click on places. If I zoom out with my wheel mouse, you can see it has found some metadata or geolocation here. So we actually took a family vacation into Nassau, the Bahamas. And if I click on that, you can see it says downtown Nassau uh, here. And of course, you can click on the photo and there's a photo of me and my family. So if I back out, now we can see it's starting to generate those places. I'm sorry, those people. And it says, OK, who is this? So this is actually my wife here. So if we want to, we can come in here, click on who is this, and we can type in, you know, Jessica and hit enter. And so now it knows that, okay, all of these photos are going to be of Jessica. Now it's kind of interesting. You see here is it picked out my daughter, which well, she's right over here on the right, but for some reason it didn't find me. It didn't find my other daughter, didn't find my other daughter. So, not real sure that this is fully fleshed out, but hopefully with future 
uh, updates, they'll be able to add more functionality to this. So to me, again, I'm not sure how useful this is for me personally. Uh, I won't really be using this as a photo and media library. If I go back to photos, I can click this filter icon over here and you can filter by, you know, your date, or maybe if I want to filter all of my photos of just my wife, I could click that and it'll filter that. So again, there might be some functionality there uh, that you might want to utilize, but it's kind of interesting and, and you can't just, you've got to copy everything into that shared folder. Here's the other thing. If you go back into the control panel and user management, if I double click on that, if I uncheck this, okay, it's going to delete everything from that folder. So everything that was uploaded into and copied into that, that personal folder, those will all be deleted. So again, just kind of interesting concept, just not sure it's fully fleshed out. Okay, before we head into the theater room and I'll show you how I use the Arvolution Media Player to connect to the NAS and play that media through it, we need to make one other change. So first we're gonna come into the control panel. We're gonna to go to File Services. And earlier we enabled SMB, but we also need to enable NFS. And so I've already en enabled it here. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that that is enabled. So I'm gonna close this. And we're also gonna to go to File Manager, go to the Shared Folder, and then we're going to right click on this test shared folder and go to properties. And then right over here, you can see NFS permissions. Now this is going to look a little bit different for you. I just did it uh, for this video this way, um, just partially so you don't see my IP address and I don't get hacked. Come up here to edit. You can see we've got a wild card right here, but so here you would put your different IP addresses for your different players. So maybe a Zipidi, if you had a Zadu or a Dune, you could put that in that address bar right here, the server address. And if you have more than one um, device that you wanna to connect to the NAS, then you would just separate it with commas. Again, these settings might be a little different for you. I just wanted to make it really easy for me to connect just for the sake of making this video but you can see the options that you have here, options that you have here, option that you have there, and then we've got that start async. And then once you make those changes, you just hit save, and then you hit okay and close that. So now let's head into the theater room and I'll show you how I connect the Arvolution Media Player to the NAS. So here we are inside of my Arvolution Media Player. Now this is connected currently to an external hard drive via USB directly to the player. But I'm gonna show you how you can connect a media player like the Arvolution or maybe a Zipidi or a Dune or something of that nature to the external NAS, which is on my network, but it's located in another part of my home. All right, so we're gonna first go into the Explorer. And then right here, you can see I've got an external drive attached called Demo Drive, but we're going to navigate to the network browser. From here, remember earlier we enabled SMB. So if I click on SMB, it sees the work group. If I click on that, you can see everything connected to that work group. And we're going to come all the way over to the NAS, the Youthman NAS. Click that. Here you can see the two folders on the NAS. So we're going to come over to test. Now the first time you try to access this folder, it's likely going to ask you for your username and password of your NAS. Once you put that in, then it's going to give you access. So here you can see that I've added a bunch more content. So here, these are some MKV files, M2TS files, so a bunch of different Dolby Atmos, different file formats. And the Arvolution will play all of these. Under music, we've got a couple of things. We've got Dark Side of the Moon. We've got Top Gun Maverick. We can back up there. We can go into photos. These were the photos uh, that we had in there already. So you can see we can navigate through those. If I back up, we can come down to royalty free music. So I can play that and it not get it flagged. So I'll back up. 
So as you can see, having everything stored on the NAS, you can organize it into different folder structures. Uh, we've got a royalty-free video. This is some stock videography that I downloaded from Storyblocks a while back to use in some of my videos. So if I go play from beginning. So here you can see the videos playing from the NAS across my network into my theater room and then it's playing on a projector with a 150 inch screen. So we'll back up here, back up again, and then there are those two files. So we've got a uh, review that I did a while back, that's an MP4, and then the Batman uh, versus Superman Down of Justice, that is a MKV file. And just to show you, I'll go ahead and click on that and we'll stop it pretty quickly. So we'll go ahead and uh, we'll just resume playback. And you can see that file is playing there. So we'll back up. And we'll back up again. So that is the SMB. And I just basically wanted to show you there's another way to connect. And we'll back up all the way to this part right here. So you can see the SMB on the left. But we can also connect via NFS. So it really just depends on how you want to connect. You may find that you have trouble with one way or the other, just depending on what uh, player you're using to connect to the NAS server. So we'll click on NFS. We'll click on the IP address here, go into NFS. And again, you got the same thing. So we've got all of those Dolby Atmos files. We've got all of the music right there in those three folders. We've got some photos. We've got some royalty free music. We've got that royalty free uh, video that I made. And then we've got a full length movie and a review that I did on YouTube. So essentially you can add all of your digital media onto the NAS and then you can access that through different things like the NVIDIA Shield, the uh, Rvolution, you may have a Zipedi, you may have a Zadu or a Dune and basically you're just going to map to the NAS and to be able to access those files. Now Ugreen also has an app that will allow you to connect to the NAS when you're on the go. Maybe you're doing some traveling and so here we have a look at the app itself. And so you can see we've got various resources that can tell you about your fan, your CPU, the hard drive, how long you've used it. We can go into the file manager, we can go into the photo section and those are the photos that we installed earlier and so as you can see we can swipe through here. It's going to take a little bit to load just depending on how fast your internet or your wireless connection is. Um, but you can have access to those. Of course, we can scroll in. And let's back up here. Back up again. Here's that test folder, so we'll click on that. There are the two videos that we had. So I'm going to click on one of those. And I can, as you can see, it's loading just fine there. So we'll back up. So say for instance, if I was away from my home and I needed to access some information or download it to my phone, let's say it was this image down here at the bottom, you can see there's a download icon. I can actually delete files, move them and so forth. Now we can also upload files directly from our phone, tablet, computer, straight to the NAS and do that remotely. So that's definitely super handy, especially if you do a lot of traveling. So the app seems really responsive. I mean, I'm clicking around and there's like no lag time. So that's really good to see. I'm actually surprised to see how much control we have over the NAS from, their, um, from the app itself. So you can actually uh, have plenty of control here, it looks like. Let's go to the App Center. So we've got all the same apps here, it looks like. So pretty slick there. We can go in the task manager and just kind of get some more additional details on the system itself. You can see the CPU, temperature, how much memory is being utilized. So pretty cool stuff. So while we're in the app, I want to show you something really cool. So I'm in my dedicated theater room right now. We've got the projection on and we're going to go into the app. We're going to go into this folder called royalty free video so we don't get flagged for copyright. And before I click that, I'm going to come up here and we're going to click on mirror and we're going to use the Apple TV to connect to my theater room. So now you can see we've got my phone being mirrored on the projection screen. It's 150 inch diagonal. 
So we're going to click on this video here and then I'm going to turn my phone sideways and tap the little square down here. And now we can see we are streaming from my phone. You can see the phones right here and we're streaming directly onto the projection screen. You can do this with Apple TV. You can probably do it with Chromecast as well, but um, just again, another really cool feature. So if I stop that, we can back up, back up. We can go into photos. Again, here are all the photos that we had earlier. I click on that you can do a little slideshow. So this is just another really cool feature to where you can share the data from the NAS directly onto say a projection or a TV. Now you also can use the internal media player on the NAS and use an HDMI cable from the NAS to your TV or to your projector and then you could view content that way as well. All right, so before we wrap up the video, one thing that I do want to make you aware of is if you plan on having the NAS pretty close to proximity of where you're going to be, so in this case it's sitting on my desk, you're definitely going to hear the fan as well as the hard drives working. And of course, if I bring the microphone even closer, it's going to get even louder. You might want to give that some consideration if that's going to bother you. You may want to put the NAS in another room and just connect that to your network. But for now, I'm going to keep it here for a while just to see. And then if I need to move it to another location, I'll do so. Now, I know this is a new adventure for you, Green, but I'm really excited for them. And I'm glad that we as consumers have more options that are available. So if you feel that the Ugreen NAS is a good option for you, I'll leave a link down in the description for their Kickstarter. Be sure to pick that up before the sale ends. You can save up to 35% off. Well, guys, hope you have an incredible week. God bless, and we will catch you in the next video.